The rental market apocalypse continues. New research reveals that almost all renters in the U.S. today are cost-burdened and a significant rate of them are spending 50% of their incomes on rent this year. But with so few rental units listed in the market right now, people are being forced to choose between making sacrifices to keep up with higher prices or facing the risk of losing their homes. Conditions are so chaotic that even Goldman Sachs is predicting that over half a million Americans can be pushed to the streets as early as March. This is shaping up to be one of the most catastrophic housing crises America has ever seen, and the pace at which everything is crumbling down is stunning. That's what we're going to expose in today's video. But before moving on, we kindly ask you to support our work with a thumbs up on this video, and don't forget to subscribe. The shortage of rental units and the steepest price increases in nearly two decades aren't just fueling an affordability crisis, but also contributing to several of the major problems the country is facing in 2023. This month, the combination of elevated rent prices and the effect of rising interest rates on home costs made the housing market more unaffordable than at the peak of the runoff in 2005, according to Mark Palin, Directory Chief Economist for Fannie Mae. From January 2022 to January 2023, rent prices surged by 8.6%, data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics show. That is adding hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars to the average rent payment. A survey conducted by Zone asking renters about their cost of living expenses revealed that 59% of Americans said their rent went up in the past 30 days, and 43 of them saw an increase of up to $500. Believe it or not, 36% or around 15 million people faced rent hikes of $1,000 or more. In an interview with CNBC, Shannon Corrick, who lives in Cheney, Washington, said her landlord increased her rent, and that forced her family to move out of their home. Just like a lot of hard workers out there, Corrick was priced out from the neighborhood she and her children grew up in. We had lived there for decades, she said. Then out of the blue, he said he was going to raise the rent. If we signed a lease, it would be a 30% increase. If we did not sign a lease, it was going to be a 50% increase and we could not find anywhere to move that was at all affordable. Today, the United States is suffering a shortage of 7 million affordable homes. So, when households are priced down to the market they're living in, they're more likely to go homeless than find a cheaper place to stay, as explained by Daniel Grubbs Donovan, a researcher at the Eviction Lab at Princeton University. With inflation and the massive increases in rental prices that we've seen over the last few years, it's much worse for low-income renters than it was before the pandemic, when we were already in an affordable housing crisis, he said. Dozens of millions of people are truly on the edge of homelessness. A major difference between the current housing market and last year's housing market is that now the bottom 90% of the population is paying 30% or more of their income on rent, meaning that almost everyone in America is cost burned by rent prices in 2023. It's the first time in history that an overwhelming majority of renters spend so much of their monthly pay on housing alone. New research by Moody's Analytics found. When the firm started tracking housing affordability more than 10 years ago, the average household spent only about 23% of its income on rent. We are in a situation where the cost of shelter, which is a necessity to life, is eating up an increasingly larger share of people's wages, and that is seriously hurting some folks," said Thomas LaSalvia, Director of Economic Research at Moody's Analytics. The research highlighted that there are some notable geographic disparities. For example, in New York, the most expensive housing market in the U.S., the average household has to spend 68% of their income on rent. In January alone, the median price for a New York City rental jumped 15% to $4,097 compared to December's numbers. 
In Manhattan, prices rose by 13% to $5,142. That is the highest ever. Real estate giants Douglas Elliman and Miller Samuel believe that renters' woes will only intensify this year. We don't see rents falling in any meaningful way in 2023, Miller Samuel CEO Jonathan Miller told CNBC. New York City renters are in for a bumpy ride, added Douglas Elliman CEO Scott Durkin. In Miami, a close second, workers are leaving roughly 46% of their incomes every month just for rent. The outlet also interviewed Crystal Guerra, who lives in a tiny apartment in the city with cracked tiles, warped cabinets, no dishwasher, hardly any storage space. Despite the apartment's shortcomings, the 32-year-old graduate student from South Florida was happy she had a place to stay for a few more years while she finished her marketing degree. Earlier this month, a new owner bought the property and told her he was raising the rent from $1,550 to $1,950, a 26% increase that Guerra said meant her rent would account for the majority of her take-home pay from the University of Miami. I thought that was insane, she stressed. Am I supposed to stop paying for everything else I have going on in my life just so I can pay rent? That's unsustainable. There's a flood of reports describing the absurdities happening in the market right now. In fact, rents are climbing to such extreme levels that in many areas of the country, major home ownership expenses consume a smaller portion of average local wages than renting. Numbers compiled by Adam expose that in many areas of the country, major home ownership expenses are less expensive than renting. In its latest rental affordability report, the company uncovered that in 58% of the 1,154 U.S. housing markets it analyzed, owning a median-priced home is more affordable than the average rent on a three-bedroom property. But on top of dealing with a shortage of available housing units, around 43% of renters do not qualify for a mortgage. That is a 7% increase from the same time a year ago. By being forced to keep spending so much on rent, people have less to save for a down payment to buy a house, noted Alexander Herman, a researcher at Harvard's Joint Center for Housing Studies. Renters are also spending less on food, less on school supplies, less on health care, less on clothes. Really, it means less leftover for all other essentials, he said. That's especially true when virtually all everyday essentials have shot up in price as well. Those who struggle with rent also may have to settle for less than ideal housing, Herman continued. A crummy apartment, a house with less space, a neighborhood with worse schools there that's further away from friends and family. The rate of U.S. households, who are now severely cost-burdened households, paying more than 50% of their incomes on rent, rose by 22% since 2020, standing at 36%. That's the case for Melissa, who lives in the Twin Cities. She told NBC News that she pays $1,065 for a bare-bones studio apartment, makes just over $23 an hour at a trucking company, and had to take a second job delivering pizzas. And I work somewhere between 15 to 20 hours on top of my full-time job, she emphasized. Even then, Melissa said she's cut back on pretty much everything. I limit myself to streaming services. I don't go to the movies. You know, I shop at Aldi's. I don't go out much, she said. I don't do a lot of things a lot of the time. That is the new reality of our nation, and the more our money goes towards rent, the less we have to spend in other parts of the economy to prevent it from experiencing a meltdown. We are now witnessing a truly chilling decline in economic activity, and companies are having to make some difficult choices as well. The number of businesses announcing layoffs is skyrocketing, and things start to get really scary when even big names in the industry begin to announce mass job cuts. On Thursday, Yahoo announced plans to cut 20% of its workforce, 
threatening 16,000 positions. The news came less than 24 hours after Disney CEO Bob Iger told investors that the media and entertainment giant is cutting 7,000 jobs and an effort to reorganize and reduce operating costs. Google and Microsoft are laying off around 15,000 employees each, and finance behemoth Goldman Sachs announced mass layoffs amid a continued economic downturn and stagnating sales. Early last week, e-commerce giant eBay told employees that it would be eliminating 4% of its workforce. Meanwhile, Zoom CEO Eric Wan announced in a memo to workers the company would reduce its headcount by 15% starting this month. On Friday, Dell said in a regulatory filing it would be eliminating about 5% of its workforce, that's 6,650 roles, in March. Transportation titan FedEx informed staffers it plans to slash more than 10% of top managers in an effort to reduce costs. That comes after the company has reduced its workforce by more than 12,000 staffers through headcount management initiatives in the final quarter of 2022. PayPal also announced plans to cut 2,000 workers, or approximately 7% of the company's total workforce over the coming weeks. And even one of the biggest asset management companies in the U.S. is slashing 5% of its corporate roles due to financial and economic volatility. BlackRock was the latest to confirm that job cuts are on the horizon in its first round of firing since 2018. The wave of layoffs shows no sign of slowing down, and this means more turbulence in the rental market. From here on out, it's going to be a very, very difficult time, said Tim Thomas, research director at the Urban Displacement Project at the University of California. With so many people losing their jobs and becoming unable to pay their rent, thousands upon thousands of evictions are happening every day. In about half of the 1,050 cities tracked by Legal Services Corps, evictions were above their historical averages. Dietrich von Biedenfeld, a professor of business law and supply chain management at the University of Houston downtown, explains part of the reason why. When you think about the cost of borrowing, when you think about the challenges of borrowing, the reality is we've got people who are forced to remain renters and landlords are able to capitalize on that, but also they themselves may be forced to charge higher rents to cover their borrowing costs, von Biedenfeld describes. That is also highlighted in new research conducted by Jacob Haas, a research specialist at the Eviction Lab. We've seen in recent months an increase in eviction filings in the areas we track, sometimes back towards pre-pandemic averages and sometimes worse. Eviction can be a traumatic, destructive experience for the families that face it, he wrote. In face of all that, it isn't surprising at all that Goldman Sachs predicts that landlords will evict 750,000 U.S. households in March, according to Bloomberg. The firm also forecasts a rental price growth of 8.4% in 2023, and that's on top of previous increases. It's important to note that in the past 30 days, there was a 17% increase in the number of renters behind on their rent compared to the month prior. It's safe to say that this figure will soar even higher as the economy deteriorates and unemployment rates spike again. This is the messiest rental market we have ever seen, and the consequences of such steep imbalances will be disastrous for all of us. Thank you for watching.